Hey everybody, Barry here at SeaTech Review. I wanna take a deeper dive today into the issue that's unfolding with the GM 6.2 liter recall. I think there's more to the story. I want to expound upon a video that another YouTuber, the Motor Oil Geek did. I'm gonna, I'm gonna share this video with you guys. It's absolutely incredible. He talks about stop following the OEM oil advice, GM recall. It's a 19 minute long video. I highly recommend you going over there and just, he dives deep into talking about oil and viscosity and OW20 versus OW40. But I'm going to take a few snips, snippets he talks about, and we're going to dive deeper on this and try to understand, is this really a fix for the GM 6.2 liter 21 to 24s? Why is the 5.3 liter not included in this? Why is the 6.2 liter engines before 2021 not included in this? Why are the 2025 6.2 liters not included? And are there actually two fixes that you can take for yourself to make these issues go away? Let's get into this. <laughs> okay, so as I mentioned, if we go over to the Motor Oil Geek, he's got a video called Stop Following OEM Oil Advice, and it basically talks about this issue with the 6.2 liter and the recall, but his whole premise of this video is talking about oil advice altogether from these manufacturers. And a lot of people are asking, well, why does General Motors use this OW20 on these 6.2 liters? Well, that's the problem. And it's not General Motors' fault. They just spec the wrong oil. They did it for one reason, guys, and one reason alone. Cafe and fuel economy standards. I'm going to take you guys through something real quick. I want to show you AFM and DFM. If you're familiar with AFM, active fuel management, this has been something that's been on the General Motors 5.3 liter since 2007. And it's where the engine went from eight cylinders and under low throttle input in the right scenarios, there's such a small amount of load in the engine, the engine can actually run off four cylinders. When this engine, when the engine is in AFM, people started noticing they had valve train issues on the 2007 to 2011 and 12, uh, Tahoe, Suburbans, Escalades, all these engines, guys are start having top end uh, valve train issues. You could do what's called an AFM delete. And the reason people don't like the AFM is due to some oil starvation in some of the valve train and the engine. And it's kind of proven that even though you do pick up some fuel economy, probably all that fuel economy savings is lost, spent $4,000 rebuilding the top side of your engine. But then the next stage of this technology was called DFM dynamic fuel management. And that's what I want to go into. And this is what's tied to the 2021 to 2024 model year 6.2 liter GM engines. We talk about the situation here. And when the 5.3 liter and 6.2 came out, they recommended a Dexos 1 standard with a 0W20 motor oil. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time diving into OW, uh, 0W20 and 40. There's a video that you can see the motor oil geek. So when you go to the 0W40 on these motors, you, you pick up more fluid thickness on the bearings and the journals and the connecting rods and the crankshaft. But is this really a fix or is this a Band-Aid? So first I wanna show you guys this recall, the 25V274. And basically it's just a full breakdown. You can go on to NHTSA website, General Motors, and it kind of breaks down the RPO 87, L87 motors and engines impacted. But the takeaway of this is, is what General Motors is going to do to fix these engines. So they talk about right now, there were 28,000 field complaints of rod or engine bearing failure, 14,000 alleged loss of propulsion. 12 alleged crashes and 12 related injuries. Not good. But here's the important part, guys. I'm over on gmtrucks.com, and this is what your dealer is going to do if you got a 21 to 24 and you've not had any issue with your vehicle. They're going to scan with their uh, the scanning tool, and they're going to look for a DTC code P0016. It's related to crankshaft and camshaft alignment. So basically, if there's crankshaft damage or connecting rod damage, there's going to be a little bit of more variation inside of the tolerances, which are going to start throwing a code. And I've even heard sometimes at the beginning parts of these failures, you won't notice any difference in performance, but there's still a DTC left back there. Now, if you are experiencing this DTC P0016, you're going to get a new engine. That means there's already internal engine damage already done. Now, if the code is not present and the vehicle passes the inspection, GM will replace engine oil with 0W40 
install a new oil fill cap and a filter. If it's present, the vehicle's quarantine and a repair engine replacement may follow. Now, why switch from 0W20 to 0W40? The original oil spec was 0W20. It's a low viscosity oil designed to reduce drag. When you go from a 20 weight to a 40 weight, it is thicker at higher temperatures, which is good in high stress uh, situations. But the downside, it increases engine drag. And that engine drag is really important to General Motors, not just General Motors, every engine manufacturer, car manufacturer in the world. If they can reduce parasitic losses of drag, to improve fuel economy, it helps the CAFE standards, and it helps their total fleet average, greenhouse gas, everything. So General Motors purposely chose a 0W20 because they did the risk analysis way back in the day of saying, all right, if you got no debris or sediment in the engine, a 0W20 should meet their engine durability testing, and you pick up better fuel economy. Would a 040 done the same thing and potentially better for durability? Yes, at an impact of fuel economy. So General Motors did their analysis and said, well, we're going to do a 0W20. The problem was there are some issues potentially tied to the manufacturing process, especially with some of the motors when they're brand new. If you look at a lot of these 21 to 24 engine failures, they're normally at the beginning part of uh, ownership in less than 20,000 miles. Some people say in the first few thousand miles. So some sediment as far as the manufacturing process gets in there, gets in the journals of the crank connecting rods, and then you're in serious trouble. Let's just talk about some things first. What is the difference from the L84 to L87? So one is a 5.3. One is a 6.2. The stroke is identical between the two. The difference is the bore. They both have dynamic fuel management. Why is the 5.3 not seeing this issue? And why is the 6.2? And why is the LT1 not seeing the issue from the Corvette? And why are the 6.2 liters before 2021 not seeing this issue? So I'm going to start with the latter. Before 2021 was not dynamic fuel management. It was active fuel management. And the difference between AFM and DFM as far as the engine calibration, I'm going to show you guys this right here. AFM, which are fuel management systems, these can increase your fuel economy 5 to 7%. That's huge. Once again, GMC or General Motors was trying to use these types of technology to improve fuel economy. If you look at the base of what General Motors, as far as their engine manufacturing for the last 100 years, it's a pushrod V8. The same as the engines they were making 98 years ago. The difference is a uh, more precise fuel management system, high pressure fuel system running a little hotter and other advanced materials where they can run lighter viscosity oils, where some other manufacturers in the industry, they just basically said, man, we can't do it with the V8s anymore and hit fuel economy and hit reliability. They went to boosted six cylinders or diesel engines, or they, everybody just took a little different approach. General Motors said, we're gonna stick with the 5.3, the 6.2. We're just gonna kind of work on making these things more efficient. But when you went from AFM to DFM, AFM went from V8 to V4. DFM has the ability to reduce all the way down from eight cylinders to run on two cylinders. So it requires even less fuel. So you can imagine if you're running at two cylinders to keep the engine going on the road versus four, less fuel. But there's more to it if you think about that. There's 17 different potential firing combinations with DFM versus AFM. So if you think about balancing a V8 and you've got uh, eight, eight cylinders rotating in the connecting rod rotating assembly and you go to two cylinders and there's all these different combinations going, imagine the dynamic stresses on the internals of the engine. Especially if this could change at different cylinders at any time, this puts a lot of combustion instability inside of the engine. And so now you start asking yourself, AFM and DFM could be the, one of the big contributing factors. You're putting a lot of load on the connecting rods, the crank bear, bearings, the pistons to run on just a few cylinders instead of the stable eight cylinders. So if you delete this, could it fix it? Potentially, but at potentially huge fuel economy hit for cafe standards. So then you ask, well, why, once again, my L87 from 2019, why is it not part of it? Because your L87 from 2019 did not have dynamic fuel management. It had active fuel management. And as of right now, the way this recall is released from General Motors and NHTSA, it's only 21 to 24 engines with dynamic fuel management and not the 5.3 and not the 2025. Well, then you could say, well, this is crap. It shouldn't be the 25 should be included too. Well, this is kind of interesting here. Made us wonder over here on GM Authority, 
Why isn't the 2025 model year included in this recall? We asked General Motors, and here's what they told us. A series of crankshaft and connecting rod manufacturing improvements implemented on or before June 1st, 2024, address the contamination and quality issues. Model year 2025 vehicles were built with these improvements and are not included in the recall. Boom. So there's your answer on 25. But I'm going to tell you what I don't like. From the research I've seen up to this point, the 2025 model year vehicles, when I researched this, are calling from 0W20 engine oil. Okay, so the 2025 can run in 0W20, but the 21 to 24 engines need 0W40. Could it be a Band-Aid? I don't know. I mean, I can tell you right now, if I bought one of these engines, I think probably the first thing I'd be doing is an active fuel management delete. If you had before 21 model year or uh, 21 to 24, probably DFM delete, sadly. But then I start thinking about, this is a big problem because people are having engine failures, but this isn't the only issue that's been plaguing the 6.2 liter for the last five, 10 years. There's been a ton of valve train and lifter failures, especially 21 to 24. So then I start thinking, well, I wonder if there's a chance because of this dynamic fuel management and the 17 different firing uh, order combinations, could there potentially be more debris and sediment in that oil making its way up into the top of the engine and impacting the valve guides and the valve seals and the valve train? Could be. And if you don't have a DTC P0016 code present and you're just going to get a 0W40, man, I'd be a little bit bummed out personally. And I'm hoping that General Motors is going to make this right. But then if I'm an L84 5.3 liter person that has one of these trucks, are you going to be like, man, um, is my engine going to start seeing these issues? I think a lot of this is tied to the lar larger stresses that are put on the 6.2 liter pistons. You've got a bigger, heavier weight piston, larger diameter. You put more power, more cylinder pressures, bigger diameter piston. It's going to put more stress into the crank area. You don't see this issue with Corvettes. They're running 0W40. So I think you're probably okay with the five threes, and it'll be interesting. I mean, I'm sure Nietzsche and a lot of hungry attorneys across the country are going to start saying, is this really only 21 to 24s? I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people trying to start looking, could there other, be other engines impacted by this? Then you think, well, what about the 2.7 liter turbo max? Interesting enough, the turbo max engine requires a 5W30, not a 0W20. So if, if you're looking to see what is the best route for your engine, you know, I would look at companies like this Boost a, uh, AFM D, uh, DFM Disabler, 100% made in the USA. Talk to these guys, look at what your options are. It might be something worth considering. And the other thing I'm wondering is, let's say this 0W40 fixes the problem. Then you'd say, well, why did General Motors, once again, just not run 0W40 from the very beginning? Pretty simple, guys. Fuel economy big improvement for fuel economy. I think this is just the beginning of lawsuits and messes coming for General Motors, sadly, on this whole thing. Because if this is the fix, my guess is the EPA is going to get involved, CAFE is going to get involved, and they're going to have to recertify these engines and see what the now new fuel economy would be. Because if you can run 0W40 make the engine work, but there's an impact to fuel economy... This is going to be a big mess, guys. I, I can just see this thing unfolding that this is now going to turn into lots of lawsuits around fuel economy losses. So, man, I feel for all you guys that have these engines because personally, I'm a huge fan of the 6.2 liter. I think this engine is awesome. Um, I've towed with a ton of them. I like the power. Um, they're, for the most part, easy to work on for serviceability, uh, spark plugs, things like that. But the active fuel management and DFM, has really seemed like the Achilles heel of these engines for the last 15, 20 years. Ford's got their issues with cam phasers and timing change. General Motors, they've got their issues. Toyota's got their issue. Everybody's got this three to $5,000 issue with every one of these engines. Nobody's safe, sadly. Um, anyhow, I hope you guys find this video helpful. Leave your comments down below. I'm curious, do you think this inspection process of looking for the present code and a 0W40, are you okay with this fix for your engine? Just curious. Hey guys, I hope you enjoy the video. Thanks for watching.